the video today is I'm going to sand off some body fill. Um, last yesterday, uh, we welded a little tiny square in here. Uh, we put fiberglass on it first. Took the fiberglass off with a little grinder wheel like this on a 24 or 24 or 36 grit, whatever it is. And I just I just ground the fiberglass off until it feathered down. I didn't go into it too far, just trying to smooth it off. Now I've covered it with filler to try to get any pinholes or any mud puddles that are left. Took all the rivets out, jacked them all off. Would you help Jack off the horse? <laughs> that was just a simple question. Um, anyways, I took them all off. I rivet them all out. Um, I took some body fill. I mixed little bit, bu little bunches up. And the reason I say little bunches is because I can't mix a whole bunch up and do it because it'll get dry before I get it on there. So I just mix a little bit up, come over and put it on my finger, and then I run back over and do another little bunch, keep going like that all the way around. So that took two or three times of mixing fill to get that and to get on the other side to get fill on that. And I put that on with my finger. That's how I did that. I put it on with my finger, little tiny bunches. On the hood, it still had glass where I was making the line. Um, there's, now I've put body fill on the hood and the cow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand them together and show you how I do that. Um, just trying to make everything fit nice. Then I come over here. Um, I was filling this with my finger. I pointed them pinholes out. So I said, what the hey? Put some body fill on it. Uh, this here was a crack because I hit it with a hammer, a big hammer, and it cracked it in there, so I just dug it out. I glassed it first, and then I filled it up to make it what it should be. So now there's mud on that, and I'm going to show you how I take it off. I got this side welded up. I put the, the glass to it, ground it down. Now I've got the mud on it. Now I've got to take it off. So today, it's Friday. Today, I have put my brain in gear, and it crunched a couple times, <laughs> but I've put my brain in gear to know that I'm coming up here to sand this mud off, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it, you know, we'll, we'll, you can watch, um, I'll maybe talk a little bit, but I have to work at the same time, but uh, I really feel like I'll even get ready here, I'll get Jolene a little seat so she, she can sit down, um, we're going to sand some mud, and I'm going to let you watch me sand it to see how I sand it, and that's basically it. Um, there's no science to this. I've got mud on the car. I want to take it off. Anywhere that I have mudded, or anywhere that I have fiberglassed or fixed or repaired, I want to make sure that I flood it. As I repaired this or doing this, I flooded the whole thing. I want to flood it all at once. I do not like coming back in and put little daubs on it. I'd rather just flood it all off at once and do it at once. Um, if you come back in and you notice, well, you haven't got enough enough flood there to really get where you need to go, well, go mix some more up and put it on there. There's no sense even sanding it if you haven't got enough on there. Um, and that's the point of the matter. You're sanding mud to uh, flood it out, you know. We don't want to take off, you don't want to start sanding something when you don't think you have enough mud. Um, I'm, I'm wondering right here, I've got metal showing everywhere on top of that fender, but I really just like to get a little bit on there to make that feel nice. So as I'm going to start, this is, this is what I'm doing Friday. I'm sanding mud. I am that close away from priming, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. So here we go. I got a 40 grit. I got a 40 grit. It's a board file. I just put it on my hand. It's round there. So really and honestly, all I have to do is feather it out. Um, right in here, I've got a little block over there. I wrap some sandpaper on. And that flat part there, I take off with a 8-inch orbital. Here we go. The best thing to do on this, when you're sanding, is to crisscross. And I'll tell you, when you get going like this, uh, all one way, um, all your material stays one way. When you crisscross it, you're allowing the material to fall on the floor, which makes it cut better. And all the people that are beginning this, or beginning, to, or beginning to learn how to do body work and want to learn how to do it, because I know that's what, you know, I think that's what the audience would be, people wanting to learn. If, you know, you already know what's going on, you don't have to watch me do it, <laughs> if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, but in, as I'm sanding this, you watch the speed that I'm sanding, and you try to keep up.
hitting fiberglass there right now. So I'm going to slow up a little bit. I don't want to dig up, dig my main material off. I'm just going to stick my finger in there, try to get a nice round roll on it. This is my very first flood of mud, so we'll see what happens here. See, that's what I call a mud puddle right there. That's what I call a mud puddle. And we have enough material on there without hitting metal to get that mud puddle, so I'm happy. Very happy. Anything that you feel on the car that is not feathered off, it has to be feathered off. Like you have to not be able to feel where it's feathered off. Or you will see it. You're starting to hit the weld right in there. You can see that. Don't want to go in there much further. Just want to fold that paper up a little bit. Back up just a little bit, sweetheart. I'm going to grit the air. Got my heels on today. I had metal there last time, and I just covered it up because it was metal, but I just want the other area to come the same height. Feels okay. Feels okay. And what I'm doing is I'm just feeling it over. See if it feels okay. Piece of green sandpaper. Let's get it fitting the shape we want it first. All right, I'm gonna get it fitting the shape we want it first. Sandpaper's pretty good there, actually. She's a hard one, but once you get going, once you get going, I feel like I'm rolling my first doobie or something. <laughs> Can't do it! You practice long enough, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like in an area like this, it does not have to be perfectly flat. But I'm going to try to make it that way best I can. I don't want to dig over in the corners too much. I don't want to dig that out. I want to go easy there. Starting to hit metal. I'm going to stay away. See, the, that's called a mud puddle. You can see right here, a little spot. Looks like a teardrop. It is. It's a mud puddle. I'm just trying to sand that out, see if I can get enough filler in there. See if there's enough filler in there so I can get that mud puddle. That's metal right there. I'm not going up there no more. Whew. Mud puddle's gone. All the stuff on the bottom, I'm going to get Jolene to go around with a little grinder and clean it all off, and then she can do the bottom. A 
little bit right here. Hmm. Da -da -ba -ba. Got to be feathered off, so I got a little bit right there to feather off. Now, that is not finished, but it's basically cut to shape. And what I mean to it is, when I say it's cut to shape, is that the four, this 36 grit, the 40 grit, I'm using to shape it. And then I will come in and with a 80 grit and make it smoother. Take all the scratches out of it. Crisscross it. Now I would prime that. After I do that, I'll prime that. No problem whatsoever. So I'll sew in here. I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to do that right now because me and Jolene will probably rub the whole car down together with 80. So it's 40, 80, prime it. And the reason I say that is because... Uh, I find that if you use if you use like anything less coarse than an 80, you're, you're really not straightening the, the body fill out. You're actually polishing it, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. Um, when you have something sharp enough to cut it, that's when you can straighten something out. When you have something that's not sharp enough to cut it, that's when you get all the, the waviness to it because it's not cutting it. Um, this is what I'm doing here, is I'm using the 40 grit to cut the fill to make it straight. The 80 grit is to take the scratches out of it. Anything finer than that on body fill, I really feel like you're wasting your time. But that's up to you. You do it your way, I'm showing you my way. Let's get this done. Anywhere it's shiny, you can see where it's shiny, that's where, that's where the low mud puddle is. There's no, there's no ocean floor showing yet, so I'm still going to keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. I want that mud puddle. See that mud puddle? Right there. But there's another one above it up here too, eh? Right there. Spread it out a little bit. I'm going to turn around here for a second. When you're watching this video, Jolene's down there watching me sand. There's a... Stand up there for a second, Jolene. Pretty for a second. Stand up for a second. Just show that piece right there. How would you make that piece? That's good enough. That's, how would you make that piece? I'll tell you how I made it, but you can think in your brain how you would make it. Just food for thought. That's all. Food for thought. I need to take that in there, hadn't I? Finish it. Finish it, Hilti. Finish it. Mud puddle there. Mud puddle. We'll go for a little while up here. See what we can get this shape to feel like. that one. I can always come back and daub with some fill.
mud puddles. I'm gonna try to dig them out. But the only way to dig them out is to take all the fill around it down to that level. You get what I'm saying? I hope so. I'm not going to get that mud puddle. I'll have to swoop that in again. You can see it right there. I'm not going to get that down too far, I think. But we'll see. I know one thing I'm going to do today. I'm going to go to, I'm going to get myself tired, so when I go to bed tonight, oh, you know, I'm going to sleep good. Huh? That's what I'm going to do. Yeah? Talk to Jolene first. Tell her how the day went. Try not to, I just noticed it here as I'm scrubbing that, as I run my fingers up there like that, try not to sand like that you'll leave some finger marks you're generally you're, you're swiping up swiping like this but as i'm doing this I'm, but i'm paying attention but you have to be careful that you do not leave finger marks And there still will be stuff that has to be fixed. I know that before I prime it. Let's get real. I'm doing the whole car. The car never existed until we decided that Jolene deserved the car. As I do this, you see this one here? I like most of it up through here is nice. I gotta drill that out. I like that most of here nice. There's a little mud puddle going in there. I probably can get a little bit of it. You can see it right there. Oh, sorry. I can get that out somewhat. It looks pretty good. 80 grit and then prime it. 80 grit, then prime it. We got a little spot, a little pick there. I wouldn't worry about it. I can fill it after I prime it, no worries at all. I'll hand sand it for a second, just to see if it feels okay. And get any fingerprints out of it or any finger lines out of it. Got the dog here, we might have company. Not sure. There's that. I'm going to jump off and do that. We're just going to keep on cruising. If they come in, I'm not going to try to pay much. I'm working, right? So we'll just keep on cruising, right? I'm on the hood. Right now, I want to sand these together. 40 grit or 30 north. See, it says 40 right there. 40 grit. Here we go. You can see, this right here, I put this on, I put a piece of tape in here, I put this on, I peeled the piece of tape off. When this dried, I put a piece of tape over here. I did this side. As you notice, I got a, this color is different than this color. When I was feeling it, I had a little dip right here. So before I sanded it, I went over and mixed some more mud up and put it in there. Why not? I'm going to need it probably. I'm using
using this just like a block, I'm not tipping it any way at all. I'm holding it flat as possible, trying to make these panels run together. <laughs> does not matter how much you put on. It does matter how much you put on because if you do not have enough, you have to go back over to the can and mix and put more on. So I'm hoping all these mud puddles in the flood, I can sand down to get that flooded out the same plane. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping I got enough mud or enough water, mud on there to flood the whole thing and to come to one surface. <laughs> Hitting metal right there, still got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a mud puddle, but it's not much metal showing there, so I'm just going to keep playing away here a little bit. <laughs> sand together good enough for me it's all feathered off nice round there it's not too high and the feathered off nice we, we got that out there that's fine this is starting to feather out nice still a mud puddle in the flood right here I want to get that off and I've got a little bit up in there and now I'm chewing fill that was there before now I'm chewing that out and trying to bring that together once them are all brought together and flooded out nice I'll slow down and get myself a little tiny block and feather it off and finish it <laughs> Got a piece of 80 on it. I'm going to come over here and just play lightly. 
see if I can't get that. Oh yeah. The reason I grabbed an 80 is I just don't want to go too far, too fast. What I'm going to do is bring that up together. Now, get a little blowgun here for a second. Yeah. over and take a look. This is what I want to show you. Now you can you can you can you will not be able to complain about well, how the hood fits because I've, I've done it together. That's a good thing. I'm hitting metal over here. I'm gonna have to put do my finger trick on that when that's all said and done. This stuff right here, this 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 water right here, I'm gonna have to flood. The, I'm gonna feather that off and I'm gonna do it right now. This line right here, I'm not sure if I'm gonna take it down a little bit more. See, I got a little. You know, a little mud puddle going on. I can take it down a little more. I still got a little bit more there, but I got some metal showing there. I'm just not sure what what I would. I'm thinking that I'd like to add a little bit more water or mud there, as if you know what I'm talking. Add a little more there and have that done. But I'll continue on, get that done to show you how I do it. Then we'll move on to the next one. Right, baby? We'll get her done up as much as we can. And you'll know, I mean, pay attention while you're sanding it, what it feels like. You have to pay attention what it feels like. You know, I'm, not, I'm not just giving her, I'm feeling same time. Trying to pay attention. Never did much of it as a young boy, but... Yes, I did. better off there be nicer we have the wipers I guess we're gonna put the wipers on I guess why not we got them I think one of the cars have it trying to make that fit each other nothing more nothing less Trying to dig that mud out of there. Now, where I've got that feathered off in there, now I can just take and put it in with my finger. We should be done in there. Put a little bit of mud right here. Metal there. We are very close there. But, I don't know. Whew. 
if you want to make your line better, always add the filler to the car, not the edge of the edge of the door or the hood, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. You know, if you're trying to make this line better and it's out of whack, add the fill to the car, not the edge of the hood. Um, yeah. So we got that pretty well basically cut in and filled together, as you can see. I'll roll this off. Make it look better. And metal there. And remember, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. It's like the guy said, do you want me to start from your head or do you want me to start from your toes? <laughs> right? More than one way to skin a cat. The only thing I'm trying to do for myself, every time I do this, I know that it's a lot of work because I've done it many times. And that's why I use that thing. That's why I became good at that, that uh, eight inch DA. That's why I became good at that because I did not like the energy or the, you know, the time you had to spend generally with a flock or a, or a board file. Don't get me wrong. I use them. Believe me. I use them. But wherever I can jam that DA, I will. The sharper the paper, um, the better work you'll do. And I say that because sharp paper cuts it straight or cuts it and dull paper polishes it. Sharper the paper, the better. Just trying to get that feathered in there nice. Everything deserves a touch. Everything. Athena might want in, but she can wait, I guess. I wait. <laughs> oh. Fina is the king of the castle. Fina is king of the castle. And if it helps, stick your tongue out once in a while. You know, if it helps. Just trying to feather it off a little bit. This will all be gone over with 80 grit, and then we'll be able to prime it. And I'm not expecting it to be perfect either. I'm expecting to fix stuff and see stuff. And uh, that's what it's about. Now, if it was a, you know, a factory car, and I did some work to it, and I primed it, I'd probably paint it after. But this is a car that we've made from nothing. Every panel was never here. We've made it. <laughs> and I hope that I'm, you know, I hope it becomes the best it can the first time we prime it. Yes, it does, but it uh, probably will not be where we want it to be to, prime, to uh, paint it, for sure. And also, I explained yesterday, I think, that we will probably put three gallons on this car, probably, and let it set for a little while. We'll play with the motor. And then we will sand it after it dries a little bit. Cure is really nice. We won't, do not want to rush the cure. Do not want to rush the cure. With that in there, with the rivets in there, I could not get the filler like I am right now. Could not get it. <laughs> Tear your hands off.
And if you have a dream like mine, that you're going to build your beautiful woman a car, make sure you know that you're going to have to put your work clothes on. Right? Hey, yeah. You're going to have to. You're going to have to. I want another piece of paper is what I want. Did I bring in a couple? I did. Yeah, you're going to have to put your clothes on. That comes with any dream, I guess. You're going to have to put your clothes on. Work clothes on. Ouch. Don't worry about your fingertips. They'll grow back. Yeah, they'll grow back. There goes my mic. My mic thing. We got a new mic coming, baby. We got a new mic coming. Who's calling the mic on? Now, the reason I'm sanding like this is because the faster I sand, the faster it comes off. <laughs> That's the reason why I do it. It's the only reason I do it. The faster I sand, the faster it comes off. That's the only reason I sand fast. Not all the time, but sometimes it's nice to give her. I will sleep good tonight. And I'll be worth my bread in the morning. Come on, baby. I'll be worth my bread in the morning. Pinholes that I showed you on the last video. I couldn't help myself. You know, there they are. I covered them. I did, I did. Let's get someone folded up here a little bit. The part I don't like about this is putting little tiny bits of mud on, is that you disturb all the mud that it's around to get. You know, as I'm, I got a little piece of mud there. As I sand that, that disturbs that. There's no way around it. So that's why I generally like to flood the whole thing and sand the whole thing, because I do not like disturbing the mud that's around it. But there were pinholes, they were gonna have to be fixed one time or another. I've changed the grit, because I found that I'm digging into the other filler. I don't want to dig into the other filler. That's why I change grits. And I basically have to feather that off so you cannot feel it. It's a hard go in areas like this, but you just keep poking away and magically it'll it'll heal itself. You'll get where you're going. You'll get where you're going. This is the time that a lot of people give up. Right here is the, is the hard work. That's where they give up. I don't want to give up though. I want to finish it for her. I want to give it to her and move on to the next one. That's what I want to do, move on to the next one, man. 80 grit, we're going over all this, but I just sanded it off. I've got that all buzzed off. Feeling pretty good, no mud puddles showing. 80 grit, we'll come back and get that all. I'm gonna move on to this side of the fender.
better the, better the metal work, faster it is doing this, right? Fat, better the metal work, better the metal work, the faster it is doing this. Management put me to work today. Less talk, more work and shit. That's an okay, baby. Now we just doing what's gotta be done, to be honest. We're doing what's gotta be done. I sure to wanna get it done. So I said turn that camera on, we're gonna sand some mud. But there's no other better way to see how it be done than, than, than watch. Going down on it to feather the fill. Onto the fender. I really, this, this is what I compare a car to, if you're going to build a car. I compare it to, um, as a pro fighter, getting ready to fight. Every time I step into a build, it's a big commitment. You have to commit, commit, and finish, and do the best you can. That's basically it. Commit. You cannot tell me these people that, don't, that fight professionally do not commit. They, prob they commit more ways than you would imagine. The way they eat, the way they think, everything. And when you build a car that to this length, on your own, it's a big commitment in the brain. Then I think a man without goals is on a road to nowhere. I don't know what road I'm on, where I'm going, but my brain is there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? My brain is there. I get this one done, right? As I do this one, this side here, I feel I got this cut in sharper than that one. But we'll have to prime and see. But the main thing is, is I will have the product on to take off. Hope that makes sense. Because then if I didn't have the product, I have to start all over again, way over there. And I don't want to go over there again. I want to, more metal right there. It's good, we're going to leave that. No little mud puddles showing. We're going to hit it with an 80, and then we'll be off to the races. I'm going to go get the 8 inch. If I didn't tell you already, I got my heels on today. I got my heels on today. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's get it on. As I'm holding her flat and hitting no metal, cruise on, you know. Woo! 
Got metal showing, just starting to show. But I got two little mud puddles going on there, and I'm just trying to, trying to get it. That's all. Just try. I think what I'll do is I'll slow back. I'm going to go to an 80 grit and try to get those. When I'm holding this, I'm not pushing on it. I'm letting it sand the mud off itself. What I'm trying to do is hold this flat so it takes it off flat. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to push on it or anything. I'm, I'm letting it work, but I'm holding it flat and rubbing it around so it leaves flat. <laughs> Got a little area there going on that I've got to mess with. I'm hitting metal there. Still got to dig that line out. That's fine. Got a little mud on them places. That's just pinholes. <laughs> Not going to waste my time grabbing a block when I can just hold this flat and take them off. <laughs> got some spacing behind the door here. It's got a lip. I've got to probably. Probably an eighth there anyways. I've got to come down along here and fill this out and make that line. That's going to be another time because you're getting no fill on it. But right now I'm going to fill, fix this fender and uh, we'll have all the mud off. <laughs> what I'm doing, I'm holding this flat to this and I'm letting it go in there and doing its work. I'm just hold, just letting it sand going easy on it. Fiberglass here that sort of tells me where I was and where I'm not. I'm gonna grab this here, keep this off. I'll do this real quick, get the face of it because it's flat there. Yesterday, when I put that piece of metal in there, I was, it wasn't fitting exactly where I wanted it to, so I hit it with a hammer, and it made a little crack exactly where the, where the fender skirt was. And I kind of laughed to myself, and I just filled it full of mud again because I'm going to end up cutting it off. there. Fiberglass there. That's where the end is. trying to do is get them mud puddles. Now at the end of this process, when I get it primed and I'm looking at it, <laughs> what I'll be looking for, I don't know if I have to tell you, I don't have to tell you or tell you not, but why not? I'm going to be looking for the height of this piece going all the way around the fenders. I'm going to be looking and seeing if, if it's all the same height, you know. That means to me that I did my job, you know. If, I, if it's not all the same height, I can go back and fix it, or I can let it slide. And I guarantee you that Jolene will be the judge. Hey, baby. Huh? Um, building, also, building a car like this, um, you have to accept in your brain that not everything's perfect.
You have to be able to accept that. I'm going to leave that inner fender on that side. Doesn't bother me one bit. That, you know, that is one's in, one's out. I think it's probably a good thing. But yeah, as you build a car like this, um, don't let perfection stop you. It's not perfect. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's what I do. Um, in all honesty, try not to let anything stop you. Nothing. Nothing. And if you lose fingernails and get cut, that's part of the game, man. Part of the game. Come on, baby. That's called the, the downhill stretch, that one. Pay attention, Chatty. Pay attention. Pay attention, bye. I still have to get some fill up and around the back of this door to make that fit right. But, uh, The mud puddle in there I'm trying to get, that's all. Hi. Metal there. Save the bottom for Jolene. Jolene said, get down and take it. Got that dug out pretty good. I still got some work right here, and I know that there will touch there, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Got a little bit of fill in here, got a mud puddle. And that's even on the inside of the door. I think we can leave it as that, can we not? So, that is, how many minutes, how many minutes is that? 57. 57 minutes of sand and Audi Bardo filler. And you can imagine I had to put it on first. I had to scrub the fiberglass off before that. And I had to weld a piece of metal in it before that. So you can imagine the time it takes. But anyways, I would keep going around in this car just like I'm doing. If that's getting done, getting the hood done, getting the fenders done, fixing up places, making the hood fit better, sanding it with 80 grit, we might be into primer very soon. All right, have a good one. It's 4080, 4080 prime. I got it. 4080 prime.
40, 80 prime. Have a good one.